Welcome to the Legacy Education ICD 10 CM Guideline Review Series. I am Tiffany Roach, the Coding Coach, and I will be walking through the ICD 10 CM guidelines with you. This video will cover the, uh, the chapter specific guidelines for chapter nine, which is diseases of the circulatory system, which are represented by codes I00 through I99. This presentation is designed to review the ICD-10 CM guidelines that are effective for both fiscal year 2024 and 2025. There were no changes to the guidelines from fiscal year 2024 to 2025. The first topic discussed in chapter nine is for hypertension. The guidelines state that we can assume a causal relationship between hypertension and heart involvement, as well as between hypertension and kidney involvement. The exception to this rule is if the documentation clearly states that the conditions are unrelated. This means that if the medical record states that the patient has hypertension and chronic kidney disease, we can assume that they are related and it should be coded as hypertensive chronic kidney disease. All other conditions that are not specifically linked with relational terms such as with, associated with, or due to should be coded separately. When hypertension and heart disease are related, a minimum of two codes are needed. A code from category I-11 for the hypertensive heart disease, as well as a code or codes from category I-50 are needed to specify the type or types of heart failure that are present. The sequencing of these codes is going to be determined based on the circumstances of the encounter or the admission. When hypertension and chronic kidney disease are related, again, two codes are required. A code from category I-12 for the hypertensive chronic kidney disease and a code from category N18 is needed to indicate this stage of chronic kidney disease. The code from category N18 should always be sequenced second to the category I-12 code and if the patient has both hypertensive chronic kidney disease and acute renal failure, a code from category N17 should also be coded. When both are present, the sequencing of these codes would be determined based on the circumstances of the encounter. When both hypertensive and chronic kidney disease are present, a minimum of three codes will be assigned. First, a code from category I-13 should be assigned followed by the appropriate code from category I-50 for the type of heart failure, and then a code from category N18 should be assigned to identify the, the stage of CKD. If renal failure is also present, an additional code from category N17 should also be assigned. It is important to remember that if both heart and kidney involvement are present, the combination code I-13 is used, not individual codes from I-11 and I-12. If hypertensive cerebrovascular disease is present, you will first assign a code from categories I-60 to I-69 to indicate the cerebrovascular disease. It will then be followed by the appropriate hypertension code. When hypertensive retinopathy is documented, two codes should be reported a code from subcategory H35.0 to represent the retinopathy, as well as a code from categories I10 through I15 to represent the hypertension. The sequencing for these codes should be based on the circumstances of the encounter. Secondary hypertension is when hypertension is due to an underlying condition. Two codes will be needed to represent this condition. One to identify the underlying cause of the hypertension, and then a second from category I-15 to identify the hypertension itself. Sequencing for these codes is going to be determined by the reason for the encounter or the admission. And your transient hypertension is when there is an elevated blood pressure and then it later returns to normal. This should be coded with code R03.0 unless the patient has an established diagnosis of hypertension. If gestational hypertension is present, a code from category O13 should be reported. And if preeclampsia is documented, a code from category O14 should be reported. If hypertension controlled is documented, this will typically refer to an existing diagnosis of hypertension that is now under control with medication therapy. 
When this is documented, a code from category I-10 through I-15 should be reported. When hypertension uncontrolled is documented, this typically refers to hypertension that is untreated or it is not responding to a therapeutic regimen. When this is documented, a code from categories I-10 through I-15 should be reported. Hypertensive crisis refers to a sudden and severe increase in blood pressure. It may also be documented as hypertensive urgency, hypertensive emergency, or hypertensive crisis. This should be coded with the appropriate code from category I-16. If there is an identified hypertensive disease, a code from category I-10 through I-15 should also be reported. The sequencing should be based on the reason for the encounter. Pulmonary hypertension is when your blood pressure in the lungs is higher than normal. This should be coded with category I-12. If the pulmonary hypertension is secondary, a code from subcategory I-27.1 or I-27.2 should be coded as well as any associated conditions or adverse effects of drugs or toxins. If the secondary pulmonary hypertension is caused by another condition, the sequencing should be based on the reason for the encounter. Resistant hypertension is when blood pressure remains above goal in spite of the use of antihypertensive medications. Code I1A.0 should be used when one of the following is documented. Apparent treatment resistant hypertension, treatment resistant hypertension, or true resistant hypertension. If the existing type of hypertension is known, then the appropriate code for that hypertension should be sequenced first. Now let's talk about coronary artery disease and angina. A causal relationship is assumed when both atherosclerosis and angina pectoris are documented unless your documentation specifically indicates that the angina is caused by something else. Combination codes will exist for atherosclerotic heart disease with angina pectoris, and they are represented with codes from subcategories I-25.11 and I-25.7. When using one of these combination codes, it is not appropriate to code your angina pectoris separately. If an acute myocardial infarction, also known as an AMI, is the reason for the admission with your CAD, the AMI should be sequenced first, followed by the code for the coronary artery disease. The next topic is for intraoperative and post-procedural cerebrovascular accidents. When a cerebrovascular accident, or CVA, occurs either intraoperatively or post-procedural, the documentation must clearly specify the cause and effect relationship in order to assign a code for intraoperative or post-procedural CVAs. Proper code assignment will depend on whether it was an infarction or a hemorrhage. The next topic is sequelas or late effects of a cerebrovascular disease. Category I-69 should be used when there is a sequela or late effect of a cerebrovascular disease. The late effects can include neurological deficits that persist after the initial onset of conditions that are classifiable to categories I-60 through I-67. It is possible that the deficits may be present from the onset or they can even arise at any time after the onset of the conditions. When a code in category I-69 specifies hemiplegia, hemiparesis, or monoplegia, it is important to know whether the side affected is the dominant or the non-dominant side. If the side affected is documented but not specified as to whether it is dominant or non-dominant, you will choose according to the following. If the patient is ambidextrous, the default should be dominant. If the left side is affected, the default is non-dominant. And if the right side is affected, the default is dominant. Category I-69 should only be reported on records with codes from I-60 through I-67 when the patient has a current cerebrovascular disease and deficits from an old cerebrovascular disease. Category I-69 should not be assigned if the patient does not have any neurological deficits. 
Now let's dive into AMIs or acute myocardial infarctions. Codes for type 1 AMIs will identify the site of the infarction, such as the anterolateral wall or the true posterior wall. ST elevation myocardial infarctions, also known as a STEMI, are represented by subcategories I21.0 through I21.2 and I21.3. Non-ST elevation myocardial infarctions, or N-STEMIs, are coded with I21.4, and they are used for type 1 N-STEMIs or non-transmural MIs. When a type 1 N-STEMI evolves to a STEMI, then a STEMI should be coded only. However, when a type 1 STEMI converts to an N-STEMI due to thrombolytic agents, it should still be coded as a STEMI. When the MI is less than or equal to four weeks old, the MI should be reported with a code from category I-21. After the four-week time frame, if the patient is still receiving care that is related to an MI, then an aftercare code should be reported instead. If the MI is old or healed and it does not require any further treatment, your code I-25.2 should be assigned. If the type of MI is not specified, code I-21.9 should be reported. If only type 1 STEMI or transmural MI is documented and the site is not specified, code I-21.3 should be reported. If an AMI is documented as non-transmural or subendocardial and the site is documented, then it should still be coded as a subendocardial AMI. When a patient presents with a type 1 or an unspecified AMI within the four-week time frame of an initial AMI, a code from category I-22 should be used in conjunction with a code from category I-21. When both are present and coded, a sequencing should be dependent on the circumstances of the encounter. Code I-22 should not be used if the subsequent AMI is specified to be anything other than type 1. If it is specified as type 2, only I-21.A1 should be used. And if it is specified as type 4 or type 5, only code I-21.A9 should be used. If the subsequent AMI of a type other than the initial AMI occurs, then the new AMI should be coded with a code from category I-21 to identify the new type of AMI, as well as the type of the initial AMI. ICD-10-CM has codes for different types of MIs. Type 1 is classified to I-21.0 through I-21.4. Type 2 is classified to I-21.A1. And types 3, 4A, 4B, 4C, and 5 are classified to I-21.A9. The, there are code also and code first notes that should be followed if the MIs are related to complications or post-procedural infarctions during or following your cardiac surgery. Coronary microvascular dysfunction, or CMD, is a condition that impacts the micro microvasculature by restricting your microvascular flow and increasing its resistance. When this is present, code I-21.B should be assigned. As always, thank you for supporting us and stay tuned for new videos in our ICD-10-CM guideline review. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you can be in the know of our newest videos that are released.